Anthony Cody for that. Morning, Antonio. You're right.
My name is Sean. I am a curate here. And welcome to you also those who are watching from YouTube. I hope you're all having a, a lovely day. The sun is shining and it's getting warmer again, which is always a good thing for me particularly, having no hair. Um, but yes, good to see you all. Um, so let us begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please stand for our first song. Jesus is the name we honor. Jesus is the name we pray. Majestic name above all other names, the highest heaven and earth proclaim that Jesus is our God. We will glorify, we will lift him. Please be seated. Now we come to a time of confession. This is a time for us to privately speak to God and to um, ask for forgiveness for the things that we um, feel we've done wrong this week. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first, first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There are no other commands greater than these. On these two commandments hung, hang all the law and the prophets. And we say, Amen, Lord, have mercy. mercy. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Our God, I am Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so please stand for our next song.
to see Please be seated. Now we we'll come to the time where our children um, will leave us. So if um, our children would like to come up with their leaders, and someone will take the candle and we'll say a prayer. And then if we could have Quinton up for our readings. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelite, Why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power of godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him before Pilate, although he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. You are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. The second reading is is taken from Luke Chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. Jesus appears to his disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Morning, everybody. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for um, the way you speak to us today. So I pray that, Holy Spirit, you would speak to our heads, our hearts. Um, and release in us uh, 
a sense of your call. Amen. So we have these um, two passages this morning, um, which are, um, I'm going to focus on the Luke passage, but one of the things that's really interesting about the Acts passage is how soon it is that it comes after um, the the resurrection of Jesus, his death and his resurrection, and how Peter goes from being someone who has denied Jesus to someone who has... uh, willing to to risk prison, to uh, risk uh, his own reputation because he has met the risen Jesus. And we have this uh, reading from Acts, which is actually, it's just after they've healed uh, um, Peter and James, um, is it Peter and James or Peter and John, um, have healed uh, someone who was uh, uh, needing God's healing power. Um, and uh, actually, I, as I was preparing for this, uh, if you grew up uh, in the 80s, you may remember the song that went, Peter and John went to pray and met a uh, lame man on the way. And he asked them for arms and held out his palms. And this is what Peter did say. Um, I was once in a, a uh, Bible study group with a group of friends and we were looking at that passage and actually we all burst out into song because we all could remember it from when we were about six uh, the power of song, but uh, I'm not going to uh, bless you with my singing this morning. Um, but what we're looking at here is this um, passage in Luke, and we've had it's like the last chapter in Luke's gospel. Um, we've had um, the resurrection of Jesus, where the women go to the tomb, where they get there, and uh, they've gone to put uh, burial spices on the body of Jesus. Um, and they discover that the, the stone has been rolled away um, and Jesus isn't there. And then we have this encounter with angels speaking to them, asking them why they're looking for the living among the dead. And then they go back and tell the, the men and they come back and find that he's not there either. Um, and in, we've got the encounters in John's Gospel where Mary meets uh, Jesus in the garden and... Um, Uh, we have this and then we move from that story in Luke's gospel of of, um, the encountering of the first day of resurrection to um, two of them uh, walking on the road to Emmaus Um, they've begin begun to hear that Jesus is alive and there's two of them that are walking um, and uh, but they're still, maybe these two haven't yet met Jesus. They Maybe they've just heard about his resurrection, but they aren't, clearly aren't convinced because in the encounter, they, their hearts are still heavy. And, um, and then Jesus comes and walks with them. And it's only in the breaking of the bread uh, uh, that they realize who is with them. But in that intervening time, he explains to them who he is set into uh, the the prophecies that were uh, to speak of the Messiah Um, and as he explains it it's afterwards they realize oh you know of course it was him and so we come to this very last bit in Luke's gospel um, and the disciples are uh, gathered together and uh, uh, we uh, I think I wonder if when they're gathered together they've got a whole bunch of questions going through their minds was it real was it really Jesus had he risen had he really risen I mean you know this is so life-changing we know that Mary has met him we know that they've seen him but this is so life-changing I bet they were sat in that room questioning their sanity, wondering, was it real? Did the women really speak to to Jesus? Did Mary really have that encounter? Or was she just so upset that she imagined it? Huge, huge life-changing thoughts as they meet and gather. These people, not, it tells us that the 11 are gathered, but I wonder if there were others Uh, who also had been following Jesus, 
who are trying to make sense of what has just happened. Not, not simply the resurrection, but the journey to the cross, the, res, the, the crucifixion, as Peter tells us, you know, that they disowned him before Pilate. Um, and, then, and then into that, his death, and then this, this moment. And I just want you today to place yourself into that scene, gathered in a room, the one you followed for the last three years, you gave up jobs, you left family, you went and followed this man who seemed to hold out the promise of life. You watched him heal people, you watched him free them from fear, from greed, from sin. You watch people change. And you watch people walk away from him. Watch people also abandon him. And then you enter Jerusalem with the crowds cheering. And then a few days later, those same crowds jeering with the words crucify. And all this taking place in the melee of Jerusalem as people had gathered for the Passover. And so now you have gathered together, uncertain, unsure, hoping against all hope. I wonder was there chatter, was there melee, was there conversation, was, or were they sat in silence in their own heads, in their own fear, in their own questions? Probably they were a mix, just like we are. You know, some, some of us, when we feel overwhelmed, we retreat into ourselves. And of other, others of us can't, can't stop talking out loud, trying to make sense of what is happening. And then into that, peace be with you. Jesus stands there in front of you, alive. It's no wonder that they were afraid and that they thought they were seeing a ghost. What do you do? Laugh? Cry? Shout out in sheer relief that he's here? And then in verse 38, he says, Why are you troubled? And why did doubts rise in your minds? that's the truth isn't it in our heads we will experience so many different thoughts trying to make sense at times of faith because as the writer of the Hebrews says faith is something that we cannot see it is trusting in things that are often unseen not blindly and stupidly but nevertheless not always seen. My dad always said, the point at which you can see God at work, that's easy. It's the times when you are left uncertain, unsure, not knowing what on earth God is doing, that we need our faith. And then he says, Look at my hands and my feet. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have. He invites them this invitation. Isn't this amazing? Touch and see. Use the senses that you have, the senses that the Father has given you, and know that the risen Christ is real. So into this scene unfolding in history, we have this amazing revelation. Jesus, risen with flesh and bones. No ephemeral spirit floating in the ether of space and time. No soul disconnected from the body it once inhabited. 
No, this resurrection is real and tangible. Touch and see. And then, as if to, I, you know, to, to reinforce beyond just the touching and seeing, he asks for broiled fish. so exciting isn't it because I think if you were trying to write this as a story a piece of fictional creativity who on earth in their right mind would have the hero asking for broiled fish but those men and women gathered in the room saw Jesus ask and watched as he ate the fish and they handed that story down in history so it might be recorded for all time So crucial, isn't it? We have this gospel account, these stories written down by those who had witnessed them and whose lives had been changed as a result. And then he explains to them that those who are there, those who are seeing, are being involved in a moment of history. And Jesus goes on to point to Moses Uh, the prophets and the psalms. He's, He's helping them to see that the three divisions of the Hebrew Bible promised the Messiah. The God of Israel that had promised the Messiah. And there he is in the, in Moses, the prophets and the psalms. I wonder if you have a strong memory of an event. It might be some major historical moment, uh, if you're old enough, the day that men landed on the moon and walked on it. Or maybe more recently, the Twin Towers. Or maybe the day when uh, we all had to stay home because of COVID. Or maybe more dramatically and recently, when Russia invaded Ukraine. Or maybe some other moment that you will never forget. These men and women have got caught up in a moment of history that changes the whole world. And so when you and when you are not only see history but a part of it, you remember. You remember where you were. You remember what you were doing. You might not have been caught up in any of those events, but you might remember what you were doing at the time that those things happened. And and this is what Luke is wanting us to know, that these are men and women who were sat in this room, who at a key moment in history They knew where they'd been when the resurrected Jesus came and stood before them, showed them his hands and his side and ate fish (laughs) and explained what had already happened to him and what was already in the scriptures, just as he had with the two disciples on the road to to Emmaus. It doesn't tell us because we don't uh, um, know. have endless books but I wonder if over the subsequent days as they spend time with Jesus that he repeats again and again and again who he is and why he's come and how that was always the plan he wants them to understand this deep within both in their heads and in their hearts And it's really interesting because this is a key part of Peter's testimony into the book of Acts. For Peter, that Jesus died, rose again, and that he, Peter, was a witness to this historic moment. It's one of the reasons why um, the disciples, whether this was a... um, the, the, the understanding of, is Jesus truly risen from the dead? That so many of those who followed Jesus were willing to give their lives for that truth. That they had seen Jesus. They'd sat in a room with him. They'd touched him and eaten fish with him. And then in verse 45, 
thinking about the bit about how he explains who he is, he says this, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. So echoing theme throughout the scripture is that for us to understand, we need the Holy Spirit, we need God to help us understand, to help us see in a way that we hadn't seen before. Something that God does. It's one of the reasons why when we have those moments of like, oh boy, yeah, that's true, isn't it? I haven't seen it like that. Is to stop and go, oh gosh, that's, that, that is the Lord at work in me. Helping me to see and understand. In that moment when our minds feel as though they might uh, explode, God speaks or breathes peace. That's what he's done with them, isn't it? He's not only shown them who he is, but he's helping them to understand even more, but within who he is, to bring peace. So they meet Jesus, they saw Jesus, they watched Jesus, they touched Jesus, they heard Jesus and knew him. And in that place of meeting, he said to them, it isn't over yet. I'm not dead. Life is not over and there's so much more for you all to do. And they are then given a, a commission, aren't they? Not here, but later, of, of to be witnesses, to tell others. So it leaves us with this question, have you met Jesus? Where were you when you met him? What troubled your mind? What doubts did you face? What storm of uncertainty was raging about you in the sea of life? What questions were you wrestling with? I had a lovely conversation with my oldest after Easter Day, thinking through the resurrection and wondering together, was it possible that it was just in their imagination. How do you know? Those are good things to do. To, to wrestle and to ask questions, to wonder, to, to read and to think. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? Is this an account of history? Can I trust these words? If you've met Jesus, I want you to pause and to remember those times when he said to you peace be with you it's either peace be with you or do not be afraid they get they're the words that are said again and again do you remember when he has said to you peace be with you the times when God has broken in to who you are. Maybe in something that happened in your life. Or maybe when you were reading the Bible one day and suddenly you saw it differently. We need to, like the disciples, remember those moments, not just the first time, but the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. Because we need to carry on having those encounters where God breaks in. Because they're to draw for us to draw deeply in our journey of faith. It's what the psalmists do. It's what is done all through scripture. Um, the telling of the story of history but then uh, that you weren't even alive for, the rescuing from Egypt, the uh, rescue of Daniel in the lion's den, the faithfulness of God, the resurrection of Jesus and the life of the early church. But then we need to tell our story to one another, to people we may encounter and meet, who we sense need to hear those words of Jesus, peace be with you. 
they need to be treasured as a moment of history, not simply to be journeyed through. Because when we find ourselves in those times of uncertainty, that's when we need to stand on those moments of God at work. And it's, it's important because sometimes people ask us questions about who we are and we don't really notice that what they've noticed is God at work in us. So I have a, a memory of an encounter when I was at school of a friend who said to me, Tamsin, you seem to have a peace and a calm that uh, is amazing. Um, and I didn't notice that what she was really noticing was God at work in me. And so I just thought, oh yeah, no, I'm quite a chill person, really. Um, and, and so our noticing of ourselves and when God is at work in us may help a person at a moment that we're not even looking for. I wasn't looking for my friend to ask me that question. And, I, and I, it, I, maybe if I, at the time, I'm not sure if I'd have known how to answer it. But I've learned since that I need to have thought about my journey. Because just as the, these disciples go on to be witnesses, so we too become witnesses of what God has done in us. And even more so, like when Thomas encounters Jesus in the room, Jesus tells us that those who have not seen Jesus in the flesh yet believe are even more blessed than those who do. And that's us. And if you've yet to meet this Jesus, then dare to hang around with others. I wonder if in that room there were those that day who really weren't sure who had come to the conclusion that it was all fake anyway, not just the resurrection, but the whole thing of Jesus. Because we know that even though Jesus did these amazing things, fed 5,000 people with two loaves and a few fish and healed people, and that there were still those who weren't sure. So it's okay to not be sure, but to pause and wait with those who also seek to know this Jesus more. Because in reality, most of us aren't that sure. Needing to gather together and ask the questions, is this real? What does Jesus risen from the dead mean for me? How can my heart be calmed and my mind be opened? And into that space, Jesus can enter and be present. And it needs some courage. Those disciples could have fled, but they didn't. They gathered together in their uncertainty. They explored and sat and talked. They didn't dismiss it and decide it was all rubbish. They were open and not closed. And then in that moment, in that hush, we need to too, to still our heart. Feel that moment maybe that God might be at work in us. I was having a baptism conversation with a family about... Encount and, and uh, preparation for baptism but in that conversation we were talking about the moments in which uh, we've encountered God and one member of the family said that about this time when they were uh, in their room and they felt God and they trembled and they didn't know how or why or but they knew that it was God and it brought them peace and hope. 
God meets us both with our minds, with our hearts, with what we do, with our hands, with our feet where we go. Senses touch and taste and sight. And so maybe this week, make some time to still your heart, to wait with open hands as a sign that you want God to meet with you and to see, maybe do that with others or just in the quietness of your own room. To wait for Jesus to enter in. As Tamsin helps me with a bit of a, a little tech glitch, um, it would be great to just take a moment to just think about um, what Tamsin brought today. So I'm just going to give us a minute to just, um, yeah, to dwell on those words. Now let us say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, can a poppy like to come up for prayers? Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you that we are able to gather in this place, both in person and online. We thank you for this precious Easter tide when we focus on the huge sacrifice you made by your Son Jesus Christ our Lord so that our sins would be forgiven. You, Lord, you continually reach out to each one of us in love. I pray, Lord, that you will touch the heart of each one of us here this day so that we may respond to that love and follow you all the days of our lives. Lord, we thank you for your perfect creation of beauty and independence in our world which is now suffering because of our ignorance, folly, and greed. Nature was such a wonderful gift to us, but we are spoiling it. Be with those of us, Lord, who will gather here next Saturday for the climate fresk, so we can understand more about these issues. Guide and direct us into what we should do to redeem our climate, so it can sustain all creatures and all plant life as you intended.
Today, our world is aflame with many wars and conflicts. We pray for peace and a change of heart in those who create conflict. We pray for those injured and those who have lost loved ones. And Lord, we pray for those who have lost absolutely everything and are now on the brink of starvation in places like Gaza and Sudan. We just pray, Lord, for a solution to this problem and we pray for all those charities who are trying to help, all those people who are protesting in many countries. So Lord, we just pray that you soften the hearts of the politicians who can open the ways. In our own country, we know many are suffering hardship, wondering how they're going to pay for food and for rent. We thank you for the many charities that exist to provide help and bridge the gaps. We pray for our younger generation, many of whom who are being influenced by social media, which in some cases is causing worry and anxiety. So Lord, again, we pray for wisdom, particularly wisdom for those who are in positions to remedy these problems. And here at St. Mary's, Lord, we thank you for the many activities that take place in this church. We're so grateful, Lord, that as a church we're open now Monday to Friday and that people can just drop into activities or just drop in for a welcome and a cup of tea. So we ask you, Lord, to bless all those organizers and participants. And we ask, Lord, very dearly that through these things that people will come to know you better. And we remember at this moment, Lord, people close to us who are in well, in body or in mind. And we name them now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, we pray that your spirit will heal those named and every one of your children who is suffering at this moment will be healed and know fullness of life. Help us each, Lord, to lean in closer to you as we leave this place today, that we may go out into the light, in, sorry, that we may go out into the world in the light of your spirit. Amen. Well, I love when we share the peace when the reading has been about Jesus coming and standing in the midst of them. So Jesus came and stood in the midst of his disciples and said, peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
Royalty. Okay. Spread, I will provide till the hearts are satisfied. I will give my life for them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. It is I.
We welcome to this table all who believe and trust in the Lord Jesus and uh, do come up. We uh, have either wafers that I can dip or you can drink from the common cup um, and Anne will have the common cup. And if you'd like a prayer of blessing, then we'd love to pray for you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To you be glory and praise forever. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. To you be glory and praise forever, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so, as our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
way to victory. I'll see the lights of glory and I know he reigns. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. So a prayer before we join with this prayer together. Living God, your son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And so we say, Almighty God, We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So we're just we're just debating who's going to do the bands, the bands of marriage. You can do them next week. So we have two bands of marriage. Uh, publish the bands of marriage between Alistair Wilson uh, of this parish and Hannah Williams of this parish. Um, this is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reasons in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. And then I published the bands of marriage between Samuel Hayes and Sam, Sally Polly Dixon uh, of this parish. This is for the, both of them for this parish. This is for the second time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Let's pray for uh, these two couples. He Heavenly Father, we thank you for Alistair and Hannah and for Sam and Sally. We pray for them as they approach their wedding day uh, days, that you would bless them, be with them in the uh, moments of uh, stress, be with them in the moments of uh, planning, help them as they prepare for both their wedding day and their married lives uh, in the days ahead. Amen. Um, Another notice is the, there's some electoral roll forms. If anyone isn't on the electoral roll, if you're not sure, just ask me um, and would like to sign up. And the electoral roll allows you to um, join our church council. It also just recognises a sense of commitment to the church, um, but isn't a requirement to keep coming. Um, and... Uh, but if you would like to, there are some physical forms as well as the electronic form that's gone out. Um, youth restarts again today. Um, any, Poppy, do you want to do one last? Do you want to do a climate? We're getting quite excited because our climate fresque event is here next Saturday afternoon from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. And fresque means fresco. And what we do is we, that our leader, Adam Hardy, who comes from St. Luke's Church, will come along with what looks like a pack of cards, but they're things that are going on. And we're going to try and figure out in groups how these things are interrelated, looking at the causes of climate change and the things that are going on in the world. And it's a way of doing, it's a fun way of doing it because we'll have discussions with each other and learn from each other. And that'll be the first half of the afternoon. Then we stop for tea and refreshments. And then in the second half of the afternoon, we'll look and see if this is leading us in any particular direction to take further action. We are here at church, part of the Arosha scheme, which gives us sort of levels of uh, classification. And so far, we've got our bronze award. So the next step is to try and get the silver award. So we've got to be even gooder than we're being already. So it is a sign-up thing. But uh, also, you could tell either myself or Tamsin if you're able to come along, because we do keep it need to keep an eye on numbers, but there are still some spaces left. Thank you. Um, also, I haven't um, asked permission for this, but we have a new member of the team who started work with us on Monday, um, and Cameron is here this Sunday if you want to 
give away if you're feeling able. Um, and Cameron started in as the role doing admin and project lead, so do say hello. And you'll notice that he's not someone who's had any connection with St Mary's before, so do ask him how his first week went and whether he survived. Um, oh, and one other note is don't put the chairs away at the end because we have a funeral in here tomorrow morning, so we will leave them out. Okay, so now's the time where we ask our kids and the kids' leaders to come up and to let us know what they did today. Dennis, would you mind turning on handheld one? So, <laughs> what have you done today? We were making time machines. Oh, show us different ways of um, showing how we could spread the word of the Lord. Nathan's with a time machine. River made... Go on, River, can you show yours? What's yours, River? Tell us. Her favourite programme. Right, so Her favourite programme. Paw Patrol. Yeah, and what does Marshall do? What's Marshall doing? You going to tell everyone? No? Do you want to tell us? Right, uh, River Drew Marshall apparently is a firefighter and so she related it to spreading the word as this particular uh, cartoon for children is presenting the Lord going round and spreading the word but he's, he's putting out fires around the world. So there we go. That's, that's the, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh, and and my one is about a person that's visiting... That is going through a lot of clouds and rain and sun to visit his friends. Fantastic. Okay, well done. And uh, kids, I don't know if you want to stay up, but we, we've, got a, we've got another worship song. If we could all stand in, it's going to be one of actions. a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. And he holds us in his hands. And he holds us Uh, 
And so this, this last song is a new song. And I've been singing this song at Spring Harvest. Uh, if you don't know, then, yeah, just, but yeah. generations falling down in worship to sing a song of ages to the Lamb. And all be gone before us and all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the Lamb. Your name is the highest. Your name is the great stands above them all, all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, holy. To the King of Kings, holy, you will always be holy, holy forever. All creation cries, holy, the nation cries, Please remain standing as we just come to our dismissal and end. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. That's the end of our service. Thank you very much for joining us. Please stay for um, refreshments at the end and um, have a lovely week.